to all the dispossessed youth of Africa for perpetuation of communion with ancestral spirits through the fight for African freedom and in the firm faith that the dead, the living and the unborn will unite to build the destroyed shrines. Hello and welcome, beloveds, uh, to another episode of Wake Up Africa. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How are you doing? How's everything going? I really do pray that you are well in all your ways and that you're moving into living life uh, truly on your own terms. A uh, special shout out, yeah, to uh, all my Patreon family. Thank you so much for supporting us uh, on this channel. And, you know, we do release these shows ahead of time there. And there's plenty more that we're just, you know, going to be releasing here here as well as uh, time permits um and special shout out to everyone that sends us love donations through paypal we appreciate love you so much i'll definitely be doing names next time i just uh couldn't figure it out with my device right now let's keep it real uh you know and thanks to everyone that has subscribed and liked and who comments and shares i absolutely appreciate love each and every one of you uh today i wanted to talk about the importance of spiritual responsibility beloveds because we've been lied to that the only experience we're having is physical and so the only things that can see us are, uh, you know are eye and eye and there's no nothing else exists in the world we are the only living beings etc etc that was one of the, the the things about the religious psychosis because they wanted to disconnect us from our spiritual kingdoms and from our spiritual worlds as I always say uh, many nations have seeded um, you know their children their you know, their beings, their powers, their fauna, their trees, so many things, the animals on this planet. And so this is a very unique place because it's a gateway to the earth nations, the, you know, yes, there are more than seven continents. So anyway, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, the water nations, the air nations, and the fire nations. So it is an extremely unique place. But if we understand that, that many nations came and birthed this, birthed this, you know, this, the humanity on Mama Earth because she was already existing. Um, if we really understand that, beloved, then we'll also understand that we have a spiritual audience. We're not alone. And we really have to get into our minds that we're spiritual beings having this physical experience. And this body has given us a license to operate here alone you know, to operate here, to the, the, a license to kill, learn, you know, a license to do many things, to influence um, the course of destiny, to heal, to save, to teach, to preach. It gives us a license to do so many things, um, you know, so, but it's not, it, this isn't the only reality, beloveds. This is almost like we're seeing the manifestation of what is really real. Because the unseen is what is more real, beloveds. And we say unseen because it's unseen by these two eyes. And it's also unseen by the inorganic ones. They literally can't see that world. But for us, we're spiritual beings having a human experience, which means we don't only have our spiritual team, our guardian angels, our beloved ancestors, bloodline ancestors, blood, you know, cosmic ancestors, um, you know... Uh, you know, the various deities that also have lent their spirit to us or are closely monitoring us, especially if we're chosen ones and we've come on a massive assignment, etc., etc. But we also now have our spiritual, you know, audience, especially if you're doing something. Because actually, if you're a spiritual being, you have a spiritual audience because you came from somewhere. And those people were from that place want to know how you're doing and they want to see how you're going to manage in this greatest, you know, transition that we have witnessed in several thousand years. And they're here to aid and assist, but some are just here to watch how everything is going. I'm telling you right now is the greatest, the greatest show is on earth right now. And so recognizing that you have a spiritual audience means that you have to be mindful, beloveds. Because so many are watching you right now. And the importance of... So you, you never walk alone. You're not thinking alone. Even those thoughts are appearing like on a screen, literally. There's nothing you do in, in private. And that's something that Babylon and the enemy of our soul never understood. 
that absolutely everything is recorded, every thought, every deed. And you can repent. And repentance is simply a change of mind. You change your thoughts and that will change your, your stream of destiny. But once we recognize that we have a spiritual audience, then we should, we should, you know, not be on our best behavior like that, like pretending and stuff, but really we should work on refining what we're thinking about, how we're behaving, those things we do, you know, those closet behaviors that we have that we feel some type of way about, um, those negative sentiments we have towards certain people, all these things. We have to really refine that because among the audience are some super powerful spiritual beings that may just decide to lend you, you know, their powers and capabilities. That's how it worked in the past, beloveds. Like, yes, the ones who have chosen to come here and have been here several times, we've come with our own power. We've come with our own abilities, our own talents, our own gifts, however you want to put it, which means that we feel more than the average man. We see more than the average man. We experience more. You know, we have a, a heightened sense of awareness. We have, uh, you know, we see things coming as seers, etc., etc. But aside from that, beloved, you see all the narratives that have been cooking are narratives of, you know, of beings that left their spiritual signature here. And that spirit is willing to come to your aid and to, to kind of give you a boost. I hope I'm making sense. To give you a boost, beloved, in your endeavors. To turn you from a Clark Kent to a Superman. For certain, you know, periods. Or to achieve certain goals. Or to free yourself and your family and escape Babylon miraculously. And so that's why we have to realize we really aren't alone. And the greatest lie we've been told is that we are alone. We're not. And we do have this spiritual audience, beloved. And from this spiritual audience can come even more helpers. Even more power, you know. Many things, many, many powerful instruments have been buried and hidden across the world the spirit of those in your spiritual audience beloveds can lead you to discover some of these things these are the times we're in you see before it was too dangerous for for even this information to be revealed because this is what the you know the enemy of our soul came for this is what they they came for and also to try and penetrate the different gates. I did a show on that. But now that season is over. And spiritually we have the victory. Which means there's so much that needs to happen. You know, the restoration of humanity. Because Mama Earth is restoring herself. But through that restoration, beloved, it has to happen through these vessels. And we can be empowered, we can be superpowered, we can be accelerated by the spiritual beings that are walking with us and that are observing us at such a time as this. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, beloveds, to Wake Up Africa. My name is Dr. Mumbi Seraki. How are you doing? How's everything going? I started the show talking about the importance of a spiritual discipline. And what I mean by spiritual discipline at this point is really being, being cognizant and in full control of what you're thinking, what you're speaking, what you're eating, what you're allowing yourself to hear, what you're allowing yourself to watch, and really just um, how you're allowing yourself to move and the kind of moves you're making and really doing that on a highly conscious, highly spiritual tip. Um, you know, that's the importance of spiritual discipline because, you know, there's so much that's available to us, beloveds. We've been denied and disinherited the most magical and amazing experiences by being stuck in this low-level Babylon system. And now we're in the age of restoration and some of us have the, you know, the bloodline and the spiritual... Um, 
you know, spiritual ancestry, if I can put it like that, that allows us to tap into some really magnificent things. Um, but it's not going to happen just like that, just like that, like they want you to see in the movies, like, you know, who's that... Um, there's that famous the, the adventurer who would go into all these tombs and you know get all these rare red powers and rare things that you know the natives had neglected you guys you know who i'm talking about i don't know there's some uh, back in the day I can, I'll, I'll remember i'll put it in the comments but you know that's not how this works because you see all these things we live in a mental and spiritual world so everything every power tool that the Babylon system has been trying to get their hands on was given power by spirit and spirit can withdraw that power from those tools in an instance, which is what we've seen with all the instruments of power that are in the Babylon, you know, museums as we speak. They haven't been able to do nothing with them. They've made them face the sun. They've made them face east. They've made them face west. They've done everything, kept them in the temperatures they were in and, you know, when they were in Eden. They've done absolutely everything. And still, they haven't been able to tap into that because the spirit went dormant. The spirit withdrew. And so it became a piece of wood, you know. The, the famous uh, staff that the chiefs in Ghana carried all of a sudden, you know, in the hands of the Mzungu, it has no power. But you see, now spirit is here because what I've been hearing is we may just have to rebuild, remodel, recreate some of these staffs and instruments of powers and golden stools, etc., etc. We may have to just recreate them and reinstall them with spirit, you know, and the spirits that were there originally that did that work are walking among us and they are part of our spiritual audience. And you see, because of all the mass confusion that has gone on and the, the internal situations that have happened among us, you see, because, you know, our ancestors, our guardians, they're not so concerned about us versus them or us versus the matrix or us versus the Babylon system. That's not what's on their mind. It's like the content of our character. That's what we're being judged on. Have we strengthened our spirit enough where we can be trusted with some of the massive secrets that have been hidden until now? And that are being released so that we can have a complete restoration of Mama Earth. Have you worked on your on your addictions enough? Have you worked on those things that those those mental, you know, things that trip you up? Have you done the necessary work? You don't have to have done it all. But have you have you shown yourself worthy? Have you shown yourself committed? That's the spiritual discipline, beloveds. Are you diligently seeking? your awakening, your liberation? Are you doing your part in the liberation of our people? That's what spirit is looking for. Can they trust you? And they can only know if they can trust you, if they can see that you can trust yourself. And so we have to be aware, beloveds, that there is a spiritual audience around us that is following absolutely everything that's going on. And um, in that spiritual audience, there, is, there are those who could really bestow upon us incredible gifts if we show ourselves worthy. And the way to show ourselves worthy is not to put on a show, but it's to diligently and continuously and with an, an incredible self-discipline. Do the work to awaken yourself, restore yourself, restore your mind, restore the spiritual practices that your people have always practiced, the way you used to connect and commune with spirit, restore that communication, restore that channel, restore that line you know, tune back in, tune yourself out of Babylon and into the real matrix. And not everyone, let me emphasize, not everyone has a spiritual audience, beloveds. Only the real spiritual beings have a spiritual audience. So make it a show worth watching, literally.
But also, beloveds, realize that the physical doesn't hold the greatest treasures for you right now. But spirit does. The spiritual does. And there are so many eyes on us that are wanting to see, are we strong enough to stand firm? Do we have enough faith? These are the things we need to work on. Because everything is possible, beloveds. There is so much that is waiting to be bestowed upon us. There are many who are watching and waiting to see how we're making progress, how far we're going. So that certain things can be restored and returned to it and we can be entrusted as custodians of the new. And these are significant powers that Babylon has tried and failed to find and get their dirty hands on. But our ancestors, where we're coming from, our nations, they don't care about. Babylon is such a small dot in the grander scheme of things. They're not concerned about, oh, will Babylon overcome you? No, 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 no. That's not even, that's how it's done spiritually, beloveds. So now it's you to disentangle yourself mentally so that you can be removed physically. What it is, is how are you doing? How is, you know, and that's why I did a show recently about how well are you holding your position? That's the most important thing right now. I don't even want to say the people you want to impress, but the people who hold your greatest blessing, beloveds, your greatest breakthrough, aren't even in the physical realm. (laughs) They're in your spiritual audience. So... Act accordingly. Two copper moja.